Fans of Charlie Cox's Daredevil were shaking to their core in 2021 when they saw the blind lawyer in Tom Holland's Spider-Man No Way Home having lost confidence in the character in 2015. Following his cameo role in the international blockbuster success, an original series consisting of 18 episodes was confirmed, with the launch set for 2024. Here's everything we know so far on the subject. To begin with, what do we know about Charlie's cameo in the Daredevil series? Marvel Studios has officially revealed that they will be rebooting Netflix's Daredevil series. Daredevil Born Again will recast Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio as the man without fear and the nefarious kingpin. There's no indication on whether the rest of the original series actors will return, but the series won't begin production until next year, so anything is possible. Cox recently reprised his role in Spider-Man No Way Home and will appear in a forthcoming episode of She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, indicating that the character is already engaging with the greater Marvel Cinematic Universe. After the Marvel Studios panel at D23 Expo, the Hollywood Report Porter had the opportunity to ask the actor which MCU actors he'd want to see in Born Again, and he had an unusual response. So I've worked with Tatiana Maslany in She-Hulk. She's incredible, and we had so much fun together. I enjoyed working with her. It would be fantastic if she could return the favor. Just return the favor, so that'd be very fantastic. Cox told the trade, Tom Hiddleston is one of my best pals. I'm not sure how our worlds might ever collide, but it'd be nice if he made an appearance somehow, even if he merely showed there with a tesseract and then walked off again. Again. Moving on, more specifics on the subject. Daredevil appears in an upcoming episode of She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, wearing a red and yellow outfit rather than his red suit from the Netflix series. It seems that Marvel decided the character's appearance in the series rather than its executive producers. During a recent interview, She-Hulk, Attorney at Law head writer Jessica Gao stated that Marvel Studios picked Daredevil's style for the series. Typically, they let us suggest what we want to accomplish rather than giving us guidelines, Gao explained. We couldn't believe it when they told us Daredevil was a possibility. And when we came up with a scenario and what we wanted him to accomplish, they kept saying no, which surprised us. The costume was the one item over which I had no control. They understood exactly how they wanted the garment to appear. She-Hulk Attorney at Law, directed by Kat Koiro, episodes 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, and 9, and Anu Valia, episodes 5, 6, 7, with Jessica Gao as head writer, follows Jennifer Walters as she navigates the complicated life of a single 30-something attorney who also happens to be a green, 6-foot-7 inch superpowered Hulk. The nine-episode series stars MCU veterans, including Mark Ruffalo as Smart Hulk, Tim Roth as Emil Blonsky slash The Abomination, and Benedict Wong as Wong. Ginger Gonzaga, Josh Zagara, Jamila Jamil, John Bass, and Renee Elise Goldsberry round out the cast. The executive producers are Kevin Feige, Luis de Esposito, Victoria Alonso, Brad Winderbaum, Kat Coiro, and Jessica Gao. Wendy Jacobson and Jennifer Booth are co-executive producers. Following that, Casey back to make Mark on Loki season two. Loki season one used Eugene Cordero's Casey in some of its most amusing early scenes, having him there when Hiddleston's main as guardian discovered a drawer brimming with infinity stones. While he mostly stayed behind his desk at the TVA, he and his colleagues shared several amusing moments because he lacked awareness about what happens across the chronology. Cordero hinted at more entertaining content with him in June 2022, but this boost indicates that he'll play a larger role in the following narrative cycle. While it's unclear if he'll appear in all six episodes, his importance should grow as the TVA and the multiverse devolve into anarchy. And, given how he responded to Loki's baggage in Season 1, adding more Kang the Conqueror to the mix could only lead to more wild times with Casey. Next up, is Disney really canceling Black Panther 2 in France? While audiences are becoming accustomed to shorter theatrical release windows and direct-to-streaming premieres, France is just one example of industry resistance to these trends. Those at Pixar have reportedly expressed dissatisfaction with Disney for preceding theatrical premieres for their films in favor of Disney Plus and theater chains generally have expressed anxiety about the transition. Strange Worlds is also slated to be released in France in November 2023, while Black Panther 2 is set to be released in the United Kingdom on November 11th, and in Italy on November 9th. Given that Disney has failed to choose a picture that was supposed to be released before Strange Worlds, it appears that the Black Panther decision is a tough one for Disney and a potential strategy. After all, Disney and Marvel Studios will not be the only ones affected by this rule. If Disney decides to stream Wakanda forever, French theaters and employees will also suffer. However, it's unclear if they'll blame Disney or French legislation. As the release date of Black Panther 2 approaches, Disney's decision is likely to be decided in the coming weeks. And, as cinemas and studios experience post-pandemic box office success, it's doubtful that Disney will be forced to tackle the problem of release windows and its direct-to-consumer streamer for the first time. Moving on, why Eternity's non-speaking role benefits Thor 4. Eternity is already a solid and intimidating creature. Thus, adding a speaking feature 
nature to the figure might have a detrimental impact on Thor 4. In some ways, Marvel Studios' rationale makes sense, given the strong performances of the three actors engaged in the film's finale. If Eternity does return in a future MCU project, a Morgan Freeman-like actor may be cast. However, Thor 4 did not reveal whether or not the character would return, especially since it had already served its function. Eternity not speaking in Love and Thunder is one of several alterations made by Marvel Studios, including the design of Gore the God Butcher and Zeus's significantly modified role, based on the deleted scenes. While these alterations aren't the primary source of criticism for the film, they do establish the impression that there are things that performed better, ultimately distinguishing Thor 4 from its predecessors. Following that, will Werewolf by Night feature classic horror characters? Werewolf by Night's decision to take inspiration from conventional horror films from the 1930s and 1940s was logical, considering that these films not only gave birth to well-known monsters, but also paved the way for the creation of contemporary cinema. The teaser shows that these films' dark, menacing style has been prominently interwoven into the development of the special, raising the question of whether or not legendary horror movie figures will appear there. Aside from the fact that Werewolf by Night is based on a monster of the same name, Marvel has a long history of incorporating horror figures into its stories, such as Dracula and their original take on a swamp monster named Man-Thing. The appearance of Man-Thing has already been confirmed for the special, which might hint that other horror characters will be included. Dracula is a good option for the part due to his connection to Blade in some fashion, which implies that the special can set the stage for their final clash. Whatever happens, the entrance of Werewolf by Night into the Marvel Cinematic Universe will go down in history, and the addition of even more horror characters may make it even more significant. Finally, did the MCU handle Dave Bautista's Drax badly? Fans have been critical of how Dave Bautista's character Drax has been depicted in the Marvel Cinematic Universe universe for a long time. Some feel that the persona has devolved into a running joke. Gunn recently responded to a fan who referred to the Destroyer as a walking meme. In his response, he described a lovely exchange between Drax and Mantis in Volume 2. The former wrestler has long been disgruntled with how his Guardian persona has been portrayed in the MCU. He feels they missed the ball by not delving into his rich backstory and instead focusing on the comedy that many people could connect to. Although Drax appears to be a badass, Bautista has also pointed out that he's always getting his ass kicked by other characters. Bautista has remarked that he's reached a weird place with Drax as he's eager to conclude his Marvel Cinematic Universe story, especially after his past with Thanos was swept under the rug in Infinity War and Endgame. Nonetheless, that window of opportunity is closed, and it's time to move on to the last chapter of Drax's journey. Even if Marvel Studios made a mistake by downplaying Drax's vast past in favor of fun, the Destroyer still has two chances to make amends. The Holiday Special and Volume 3 may probably explore a new side of him, especially now that Thanos, the murderer of his family, has died. Well, that marks the end of our video for today. We hope you enjoyed it. On your way out, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more content like this in the future, and thanks for watching.